Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shokat Ali Khan, and I'm the Chief Information Officer at the Aga Khan University. I'm happy to welcome you all in our today's online public lecture on Anywhere Healthcare, delivering patient experience and cutting edge healthcare. This online public lecture has been organized by the Aga Khan University in collaboration with the University of Central Asia and VMware. I'm delighted to introduce today's speaker, Prashant Pandey, Director of Technology, Asia Pacific and Japan at VMware. Prashant Pandey is a technologist, author, and conference speaker, currently working at VMware as a Director of Technology, Asia Pacific and Japan. Earlier to VMware, Prashant worked with Cisco Systems, Alcatel Lucent, Lucent Technologies, Bell Labs, Flextronics, and Intel on Canada on technology leadership roles. All the participants attending via Zoom, please write your questions in the Q&A session section. And all the participants attending via Facebook, please type your question in the comment section. Prashant will be answering your queries at the end of the session. With those words, please welcome Prashant Pandey. Uh, good evening. Uh, warm good evening to Mr. Khan and um, everyone on the call today. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to share the goodness that VMware is, is driving in healthcare industry. We all know the most important thing for us was healthcare for the last two years. And I'm very proud today because I'm sitting with the community, which is creating not just technology, but it's also creating healthcare so that many lives can be saved and no, no purpose is bigger than that. So Mr. Khan, I sincerely thank you and your team for driving the goodness. That being said, technology has a very important role. And today I'm going to share five things which you can do in the healthcare industry with the help of technology to save many more lives. Let me share what we observed over a period of last two years. So we were fortunate enough as a company to work with many of the healthcare providers in the industry. We as a technology company were enablers by providing right applications, the right software, right experience, and right operations excellence to patients, to doctors, to healthcare staff, and to paramedics so that they can be effective and agile. A testimony of that is here where we were very fortunate to learn and share with many of the big banks, sorry, big hospitals in the world. We found three things which were very important for healthcare transformation. First, patients. Everything we do in healthcare is centered on patient. And we felt that 82% of patients are looking at digital options to entertain themselves, to get better, and more importantly, get healthcare. However, patient can't be cured unless the clinical staffs, the doctor, experts like nurses and others can help them. And we also realized that clinical staff also were more efficient and productive when they started using technology to monitor health of patient from anywhere. And the third big thing is a community because each one of us were also part of the community where we consumed the services given by our governments, our healthcare agency, and our clinical staff. For example, I am here in Singapore and the government here has launched this app called Trace Together. This app 
was distributed to everyone in the community of Singapore. And this app helped each one of us to stay safe and stay secure. This was just one example. And I'm very sure wherever you are in the world, you are observing that we are communicating using technology to stay safe. So these three things have changed, not in a small way, but in a very big way. However, become, because we are a technology company and we want to do research also from our customer, we work with MIT Technical Review Research team and we surveyed around 600 techn technology and business leaders worldwide to gather their feedback. And this report, which is available for everyone to read, suggests that 89% of 600 people said that pandemic has removed the barrier which were created decade long ago. And I'm very sure each one of you must be experiencing that, isn't it? However, because when we talk of healthcare, everything has to be centered at one persona, and the persona is patient. Let's look at what technology can do for patients. So if you see this diagram, patients are consuming services from different places, different devices, and different people. For example, patients can consume service by going to hospital, but if they're not very critically ill, they can get service from a patient portal or app, just like the one I showed you. In case they are not able to go to hospital because it's far, we are seeing a going, growing trend of virtual care where doctors and nurses and healthcare staff are able to communicate to patients virtually. However, in case of high resolution reports, of patients, for example, X-ray, EMR, we see radiology plays a big role. However, now radiologists also can access the patient report globally so that they can give prescription and hence patient doesn't have to wait for two or three days for the radiologist reports to come. Diagnostics, each one of you have seen, not just hospital, I feel each one of you must be having even a small watch with you or um, oxy oximeter, which were very small devices, but we're giving you the indication by diagnosing your health status. And that was just an example. But imagine when you go to real professional organizations, they are transforming the whole edge with different types of devices just to do one thing. They want to diagnose the patient's condition and pulse and the stats. Coming to clinics, we saw clinics are globally proliferating. It was very hard for us hospitals to scale themselves. So we are seeing trends like pop-up sites, which converted themselves to hospital or clinical form. We saw ambulances becoming mobile and becoming clinic so that they can reach out to patients where they need them more. Not only that, we saw even planes becoming hospitals so that they can move quickly, but during the transit, they can act as clinic. So the boundary of clinic has gone beyond room to different locations, which are smaller in nature, to different vehicles, which are running on road, also on the vehicles which are not running on road like planes and ship. And we have a healthcare agency who is doing that. But personally, I am very thankful to the humans who are helping these patients. The students who are coming out of college and helping patients by during their internship, senior doctors, every reception staff, every clinical staff, every compounder, every chemist, they are all part of the caregiver community and they are all able to talk to their patient 
only if they are on digital medium. So if you see the world of legacy has been broken and it has become real time, but all focusing toward patients. With that, we found that the technology has to drive three outcomes. Number one, patient experience. Second, operational agility. Third, clinical productivity. And I'm going to talk in deep on all these three with a few examples. By now you must be thinking that I understand why things are changing, but what can we do? How can we transform? So let me go to that point where I will show you the five ways in which we are seeing health cares are transforming. These are the five ways. However, I will go deep into each one of them and demonstrate you the examples. The first way is to modernize the IT. When pandemic happened, business continuity and disaster recovery became very important for every healthcare organization. And that required a need for any existing healthcare to become modern if they are not, or if they are to become more modern. The second is to enable new life, new care style. I call it telecare style. How you can remotely help patient. Third, patient experience. Any one of you now when you're going to hospital, you're seeing their gadgets, which are helping you not just get your stats, but keep you entertained, keep you notified, keep you informed so that you can self-service yourself in the case it's possible. Remember the message which came on your phone from your friends, your government, your healthcare bodies, which guided you during pandemic, how to protect yourself. That's just an example. The fourth way we can transform healthcare is by scaling and securing. Both are contrast, but are important. For example, the moment you try to replicate a hospital in a small pop healthcare unit, you get in a domain where you get threatened by ransomware attacks because the data is going outside of the hospital. So you have to solve the problem of scale and secure by catering to distributed care team in the distributed healthcare world. Fifth and most important is protecting healthcare data and patient trust. When I was a kid, my doctor used to give me prescription which was written on a piece of paper. Now, when I go to hospital, I don't get paper prescription, but I get my medical record, which is digital. And I'm very concerned that if somebody steals my medical data, that will cause a big problem, not just to me, but many others who depend on me. For example, my family, my insurance company, my corporate people, and my government. That being said, these are the five things which we should change. And I'm going to take you through what are the problem, what is the solution, and what are the benefits which companies have achieved with a few examples. So let's dig into that. Let's talk about patient outcome first. If you see, there are three key persona who are very important in delivering patient experience. First, the patient themselves. Second, the clinical staff who is distributed in nature. And third, the emerging technology, people like Mr. Khan and team who is not just building themselves, but helping many others to learn and build technology so that the patients can be uh, given best experience. Let's look at patient, how we can transform their experience. Patients typically have three problems. First, the quality and frequency of communication is bad. Second, they are not able to 
coordinate the healthcare in hospital quickly. Third, the engagement with patients is very low because the ratio of clinical staff to patient is very high. This problem can be solved by creating a digital edge. Digital edge will provide the benefit of number one, ensuring that patient is engaged by getting notifications. Number two, by coordinating and collaborating with the staff through digital media, like phone or video chat or a small button which can call someone or a voice recorder or a robot. Third, the quality will certainly increase because patient will feel non-anxious. Patient will feel that the hospital is empathetic. Patient will feel that he is taken care of not every hour, but every second. So this is one way we can transform the patient experience by using edge. Let's talk about the distributed healthcare staff. They have the problem of burnout because they are not able to scale themselves. They have to travel to multiple hospitals. They have to travel from home to hospital. So this is causing a burnout, which is not being monitored and is a huge risk to healthcare industry. Second, the mobility of the staff. When a doctor travels from one hospital to another, how he or she is able to access data. When a specialist or radiologist goes from one floor to other in the hospital, how accessible the data is. When the nurse goes on a round in the hospital, how frequently she is able to see and access the patient record anywhere. These are the problems which can be certainly solved by adopting digital healthcare workforce, which will improve three things. It will improve the empathy and awareness about the health of the staff itself. Second, it will support their mobility. They can work from anywhere just like we do in VMware and other hospitals who are working with us are doing that. And third, it will go and improve their efficiency because efficiency is a factor of availability of data. And if you are able to access data in a mobile fashion, you are more important and efficient. Let's take an example, the nurse. When the nurse goes from nurse station to the ward where the patient is, Imagine she has a device like this, where she can just access the whole information anywhere where she needs. Won't be she effective? Doctors or radiologists, when they can access the patient record or x-ray from anywhere. For example, if there's a hospital in Pakistan, such like AKU kind of big hospital, but there's a radiologist sitting somewhere in Russia and they can look at the radiologist report of this hospital remotely, won't the healthcare be distributed and efficient? Yes, it will be. So these are a few examples of the way edge is transforming the clinical staff. The third thing is about scale. We have to, we, we have done enough, but a lot has to be done. If you look at the world, there are 4 billion people, 7 billion people, and 4 billion of them are in Asia itself. Do you think they are getting appropriate healthcare? Are they all getting the attention that is needed? Are they all getting the notification on how to protect yourself? No. And that's the thing where any healthcare organization can drive an outcome by providing a new care model, I'll, which I will talk about in next section. It can do that by integrating data and systems across departments, and it can scale itself by reduce, reducing the administrative burden by removing paper, bringing operational efficiency, and bringing in scale by digitizing everything. So these were the outcomes which can transform the patient care. 
However, let's look from the hospital perspective. We are all sitting as part of this prestigious university who is not just university, but also helping a hospital to grow and scale. But how does that look like? To explain that, agility is a word which I want to give you. Agility at hospital, agility at telehealth, agility at delivering healthcare at a pop-up site. Let's look in deep. We all know hospital and we all know hospital were overloaded and still are overloaded. And because they were overloaded, there was a need to burst and scale. The applications were able to burst and scale, but the devices were not able to burst and scale. The gateways were not able to burst and scale. The perimeter was not able to burst and scale. And that caused the choking point where the outcomes of customer got restricted because there were systems which were scalable and burstable but their systems which were not scalable and were stable. For example, if there was a nurse or clinician who was working in a hospital on a Windows laptop or a desktop, suddenly because of pandemic, he or she had to work from home. However, he or she was not able to carry the desktop along with themselves. Wasn't it a bursting problem? Because if you try this one example by millions of staff globally, this was a huge problem. And we were able to solve that problem by providing remote virtual desktop. We helped many hospitals to spin up desktops instantly so that the clinical staff can work from anywhere. This is an example of remote desktop empowering healthcare staff and freeing them from the device dependency. Let's look at the pop-up site. We did see an example where IT helped hospitals to create new sites during pandemic. And I feel that phenomena is going to persist because that has become a norm. I'll give you an example. Next to my home, I have a community center which has been converted into a place where I can go and get vaccine. And I think because it has been done once, now it can be done twice. And that has become a process. So the need to deliver rapidly healthcare service is delivered by technology, which can be easily done by three things. Number one, delivering devices at a location where doctor and clinical staff can access data. Number two, deliver a superior user experience. For example, if there's a patient who has three seconds and doctor needs to see his report, do you think doctor should go and key in username and password on a laptop? That's the criticality we are talking about. And to do that, we have something called tap and go, where we have enabled many doctors who can just go tap their card and immediately the information can pop up in front of them so that they're not wasting single second and are experiencing the consumption of technology which is helping them to save patients. Every second is important and hence experience matters. Securing data mobility and promoting that application performance at the edge is a key. For example, if there's a remote site and the radiologist report is in data center and the network connectivity is bad, the doctor at the remote site can't diagnose the problem or the disease that patient is going through. This can be solved by new designs where the cloud can be distributed at edge 
where the edge can have the relevant data next to the doctors, next to the patient, next to the pop site, so that the doctors can take decision quickly and save health, uh, the save the patient. This is a new implementation of edge and new architecture of distributed model, which is bringing in efficiency and scale and likely will cater to billions of people as the healthcare evolve with agility in future. The third emerging trend is telehealth. In the first trend we saw hospital becoming important. In the second, we saw pop-up sites being there, but we all are sitting at home. I am sitting at home and I can consume telehealth care across the industry, not across the countries, not in developed country or developing country, but this is a universal global phenomena where doctors were able to talk to patients remotely. In my family, myself, there were a few patients, my family members, and doctors were talking to them every day twice on WhatsApp, and were able to give them advice and suggestions on how to take care of themselves and how to eat the right medicine and follow the prescription. That was just a very basic example. However, the big hospitals, the leading hospitals and the promising hospitals are taking this trend to a next level where they are consuming the device power. I call it supercomputer. If it's in hand of a patient, they can consume healthcare service remotely. And that's what is the adoption of telehealth. Not only the, and, and if you look at this device, it can today monitor my blood pressure. It can monitor my oxygen level. And not to mention, it can monitor my steps. It can monitor my other critical healthcare data, which can be sent to a hospital remotely. And I can get healthcare service remotely. Don't you think this thing should scale and become more prominent so that everyone in the world can get healthcare in a daily healthcare fashion? And that is a trend we are seeing is growing because of three things. It's helping to sustain and scale of virtual service. It's helping to drive efficiency and operational excellence and helping to improve the timeliness in which a patient should get healthcare. These were three examples which showed how agility is being driven by technology in healthcare by adoption of cloud and edge. But let's come back to the most important thing, which is trust. Any patient who shares data with you shows a lot of trust. And now, as I said, because the edge is becoming critical where applications are sitting next to the patient, we should have a security paradigm, which is keeping the data safe, not just in data center, not just in cloud, but also at edge. And for that, VMware provides a zero trust based security architecture, which will make security intrinsic and reduce your operational cost across the board to make data secure. And not to mention the PHI in cloud depending on the country, depending on the governance model, depending on the requirement of the healthcare agency, there are norms which are able to control and provide a governance model, how data can be secured. This can be easily catered by technology, by a small setting in the system, and hence reducing a loss of PCO cost lot of business strategy discussions and a lot of security access problems across multiple devices. So we looked at the five use cases and we saw an example of all three of them and how technology can solve that problem. That being said, if I have to conclude, I would like to give you three R's 
it can transform the healthcare industry. First R is remote desktop. Imagine the power of accessing desktop anywhere. Second R, remote experience. Experience not has to be delivered in person, it has to be delivered remotely. And that can be done by technology. Third, remote notification. Every healthcare governance body or organization should be able to send a notification to the citizens, to the patients, and to the organization staff quickly so that they can understand what they have to do to stay safe and take care of themselves. That being said, I would like to take a pause and would like to open the floor to answer any questions and receive your kind feedback. Thank you, and back to you, Mr. Khan. Uh, thank you very much, Prashant. Very interesting uh, presentation and a lot of uh, good information. I have received two questions at the moment. I'm not sure they are directly relevant, uh, but but it 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 uh, actually asks for the overall context. As you mentioned, the uh, dependability of uh, uh, technology on healthcare. So the question is, uh, what is the global best practice about the ratio? between how, how many staff, uh, technology staff should be there to serve the organization. Is there any global standard you can share with us in, in terms of numbers, uh, total staff ratio, IT staff? Yeah, I'll give you an uh, example because globally, there are four kind of hospitals. The first hospital where still paper are used, uh, second hospital where desktops are used, third hospital where mobile devices are used and fourth hospital where edge is used. So in, in the hospital where still things are on pen and paper, pretty much you don't, the ratio is zero. There's no IT staff. And that certainly is very low in the world. The second hospital where there's a desktop, we typically see one desktop admin catering to 100 to 150 desktops, but the ratio has been changing over a period of time in the modern legacy in the modern way, because we have transformed even the modern desktop management where the ratio can grow to thousands also. And recently in VMworld, we had an example of a customer who is actually managing 100,000 desktop with a very small ID team. So that ratio is changing too. Let's talk about the mobile devices because the last five years we saw a separate team coming up who was kind of experimenting on mobile device. And we saw a ratio with our product of one to around 1,500 to 3,000 mobile devices easily being managed. However, a few organizations scale to a point that they can achieve 15,000 devices being managed by one or two people, but that happened when they achieved the operational excellence. Let's look at the edge where the action is happening. So if you look at things around you, edge will not be in hundreds or thousands, it will be millions. And that's the piece where very num less number of people in IT will be able to manage millions of devices. I'll give you an example, a small thing like a video camera. If you look at a hospital, and if you look at a hospital of a size of um, 10,000 square feet land area, they can easily have nothing less than thousands of cameras, forget any other sensors. And you can easily manage all of that with at least four to six people to start with. But once you become mature in edge operational excellence and become true digital healthcare hospital, your ratio will go to millions because we are building product technology, which is simplifying your operation cost, making it easy to configure, making it automated so that you're not spending time in configuring and preemptively, but proactively. So that's the landscape we are observing, Mr. Khan. Uh, and we're happy to share more with anyone. Uh, thank you very much. It's very interesting. Uh, so the relevant, uh, another question I have received, and that is they're uh, asking about the budget allocation compared to the overall revenue. What should be the yeah. technology budget for, for a hospital or for an organization? Is there any data available for that? There's data, however, the data is very um, confidential. 
Um, but I have MIT report with me, which I can share after this call to everyone to read. We saw every organization IT budget has gone up and it has gone up based on the confirmation decision and capability of the team. For example, the thought leaders like you, the change agents like you, they're bringing the team together to brainstorm that, hey, if we have to scale to 10,000 pop sites, what would be the cost? Imagine if it's 100K, I'm just putting a number, 100K into 10,000 becomes a number which you can um, scale the budget to. So what we are seeing before budgeting, every leading organization is having a team or discussion on the model which they want to achieve. Based on that, they're transforming the journey which they're going to take. And based on the journey model, they're doing the pricing, which is not just one-time TCO, it's a continuous consumption service which is growing to scale. For example, if you are able to remotely assist 15,000 people, you are certainly going to reduce drastically your cost of tickets. So those kind of transformation are happening and we are doing those analysis with each hospital and um, customers. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, another uh, question I, I, I was just uh, reading that is uh, with regards to the vulnerabilities, because uh, what you discussed so far is uh, the, the trends and then they are going uh, on a day by day basis. And that also means that uh, as far as you are connected digitally, then your vulnerability scale is also increasing. So how do you see that that uh, built in solutions uh, for with regards to vulnerability part? And then uh, how do you see that the organizations are coping with the cybersecurity uh, challenges? Mr. Khan, you brought the hottest topic of the industry today. To an example, one of the largest vulnerability or ransomware attack costed an organization $50 million. And this is happening across the board. So before we fix the problem, let's look at the cause. The cause was that the devices, the perimeter, the IDS, IPS, and everything which was securing data was within a perimeter. That was the cause. And that cause has now transformed because devices have gone out, data has gone out, device and users have gone out. So no more the way we were able to solve the problem of um, securing data will be applicable in new world. And that's the place where we are seeing and building rather VMware's service SASE solution, which will deliver you zero trust. And that zero trust is a transformational thing because it doesn't look at just the device or IP address. It looks at the whole context. For example, it looks at the user, Prashant Pandey. It looks at the device posture, which device Prashant Pandey is accessing. It looks at the network posture. Is there a traffic coming in and blipping in the network? It looks at the application. Does Prashant Pandey has the right to access that application? And it does that continuously on an automated fashion. And it monitors the whole system so that vulnerability can be removed. So we are building zero trust with many new customers who are transforming the way to save themselves for the biggest problem in the world. And I'm, I'm thankful to the gentleman or, or lady who asked this question because she should certainly engage with any one of us in VMware because if we are doing delay, every day we are at risk. Yeah, back to you, Mr. Khan. Thank you, thank you, Prashant. It's a very comprehensive and relevant um, answer. So uh, another question I have received that is with regards to the post pandemic, uh, do you see that the, the dependency on technology will be increasing? Of course, uh, that we can all say yes, that will increase. How do you see that the organization will prepare for the next generation of uh, technologies uh, so that the new world, which is uh, demanding post pandemic, where now uh, digitalization has been more and more uh, actually, uh, it's, it's one of the most important part for any, any company, uh, hospital or organization. So what are your thoughts about the future trend 
technologies which are coming yeah very uh, deep question every organization is going to transform in three ways um because the hospital the infrastructure has to scale so we looked at hospital was there then we saw the pop site coming up we saw the telehealth coming up these three will evolve and each of these three will be catered by devices so hospital has everything today there's x ray machine there is a radiology machine there is a sensor to monitor data and stuff the, all of those have to transmit across and that will require a transformation of a design where we'll have a design where few things will be central few will be at the edge for example um, the capability to scan a healthcare status of the patient can come to pop site but the data can be at the central site or at edge depending on the design and the third piece is telehealth which will be scaled by simple virtual things. We are seeing virtual reality uh, becoming important, XR becoming important. In fact, in VMworld, we announced a beta where we are not just managing desktop and mobile device. We started managing, um, we started beta of um, all the Google glasses and uh, AR glasses and uh, XR glasses, which will, which will create a new work style and promote telehealth. For example, a hospital or doctor sitting in, in his home or her home, will be at a glass, we'll see the whole hospital in front of them. On the other side, there'll be patients who will feel that they're in hospital, but both of them are talking to each other. So this is the new trending um, incubation which is happening. And that's actually going to change the um, um, daily health. So three buckets in which transformation will happen. And every organization is carving their journey plan to arrive at that. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Prashant. Uh, we can take one more question if that is okay with you, and then we can uh, we can stop here. So um, uh, we have received a question. Please share the uh, HIPAA compliance role with respect to the solution you are offering. Yeah, um, that's very important because um, we are one of the company who try our best to stay relevant, and we invest a lot in certifying ourselves. So we have the guide, uh, we have certified documents which are available and um, AirWatch was, we had the product which, which was certified and we keep doing that uh, on a regular basis so we can share that. For example, it's not HIPAA, but certainly it's related to federal government. Um, I, this is my device and I need an email client. On, on this device, I have a Boxer email client, which is the only email client in the whole world which is NIAP uh, certified. So that's one of the effort we have put for public sector. Similarly, we have put effort for healthcare. And you can see that nine out of 10 hospitals in the world are using our, our technology. So our team will certainly be able to um, share those data with us transparently that what's there, what's not. However, you can also talk to many other hospitals who are working with us and our partners because we can't do everything. So we are working with partners who are providing us devices, partners who are bringing EMR application, partner like Cerner, who is the best um, in, in med bringing medical healthcare. So we would like to work with you, not just on a standard, but actually transforming your hospital so that you are delivering the digital patient care to your patients. Uh, thank you very much, Prashan. Uh, thank you for your time for uh, such an uh, informative presentation. And I think I'm sure that um, our attendees who are actually joining from uh, Zoom and also on social media, they have received a lot of information. Uh, we, are, we have recorded this session and then in a couple of uh, days, it will be available on the University of Central Asia's YouTube channel. So I would like to thank uh, the University of Central Asia, uh, VMware, and the Al Khan University uh, teams uh, for, for organizing this uh, session. And uh, hopefully we will continue this dialogue and then we will come up with another exciting session in, uh, in, uh, during the next month. So thank you very much everyone for your time, for your participation. And thank you once again, Prashant, for an excellent uh, presentation. Thank you and very nice afternoon. My pleasure and I resonate. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.